So this morning I was getting ready to get on the train. Two of my brothers from the mission came up. One of them was doing really good and the other one not. One of them was going to a meeting, like a 12-step meeting, and the other one jokingly said he was waiting for the 10 o'clock meeting at Specs. And we encouraged him to go to a meeting. So by the time we had gotten off at, at our stop, he went to a meeting with the other brother that was doing good. So it was what an opportunity to encourage somebody that was fixing to go do something they shouldn't be doing. You know, I struggle from a major depressive disorder with anxiety. And I would tell someone who's struggling from that, make sure you stay plugged in with your doctor and stay on your medicines. Cause I recently had a struggle and it got pretty scary. It doesn't go away. And so, Change of medicine uh, literally made me suicidal, and that's when I reached out to you. But having Pastor Carlos call me out of the blue was just touching, you know, um, that somebody cares. But I cried out to the Lord, and he answered. As far as the uh, the group that's that, that I'm a part of here with Freedom, um, if you're struggling with addiction, you have got to stay plugged in. You have got to stay accountable to somebody. You have to have a sponsor. It, it doesn't have to be a 12-step program, but... I believe that, you know, there's strength in numbers. Coming here has been part of my salvation. You know, 17 months ago, I was homeless. And now I have my own apartment. I have a good job. I have my mental health back and my health. And sobriety, I have 17 months. And I've been, I've been playing for Freedom Band for, since January for six months. Accountability, I learned last night through the program director at Open Door. He gave me uh, an app called Sober Grid, and it's kind of like immediate help and you can get on there and share and ask for, for help. You know, it's uh, it's an online deal. It's kind of like uh, our prayer chain that we have for freedom. Someone's always there. Someone's always asking. Someone's always giving. Uh, first of all, getting out of yourself, serving somebody else. When you do that, your focus is off of you and it's on somebody else. That's that's my ministry is giving, you know, whether it's financially or with my time or my talents. I was in ten City with no tent. 17 months ago, drinking about a fifth of whiskey a day, and I was on psych meds, and I was trying to commit suicide, and I would end up in the hospital weekly, and then they would put me in the psych ward, and um, I found myself at the HRC, the Houston Recovery Center, and I thought I was in jail, and they, they helped me, and they directed me to the Open Door Mission, but you have to make the choice whenever you enter the gates that says change begins here. You've got to want you got to come to the end of yourself. I mean, I thought I would never be there, but I was. And so when I got to the mission, they helped me with my health because my health was really bad. The alcohol destroyed my heart and my kidneys and prostate. And uh, so they helped with the medicine, the doctors, and then the psychological help working through issues, getting to the root issues. I found that addiction, most people that are addicted have been through some kind of trauma. And uh, for me, it was uh, suicide in the family. Uh, early age, mother committed suicide. So. I started medicating, you know, we started to feel good, but I didn't know what I was doing until later on that I was trying to cover some hurt. So when you get to that point and you deal with it, and then with, with my me mental health condition, uh, medicine is important, but the, and working the program there at the mission, you know, graduating and staying under authority, you've got to stay under authority. That's, that's, I think that's, even after the, the program, you graduate, I tell my brothers, now the program be begins as this when the rubber meets the road. Why is staying under authority so important? It's all the way through the Bible. You have to serve somebody. You know, you have to answer to somebody. No man's an island. You have to. I just believe that with all my heart. Don't isolate yourself. When a man does that, the word says that he seeks his own desires. And you find yourself right back where you were. Never isolate yourself. That's why I go back to the mission. And I call my brothers on the phone. And we talk. Very important. It's a family. It's, it's a fraternity. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for, for them. Started out smoking cigarettes at 10 years old and found weed uh, weeks later in the house because father was a drug dealer. He's a, he had a really good job. My, him and the mother both worked at the refineries in Deer Park, but he just he had a hunger for money, so he found a way to make it by selling illegal drugs. And then it went from marijuana to finding pills and quaaludes in the icebox and you know rows of, uh, of pot inside of the house. So I went to school with a jacket full of drugs every day, every day. And as I got older, we started doing drugs together. And then it just really got bad. You know, it was 20 years of crack addiction. Always drinking, professional drinker, because I played in clubs. The amazing thing was I never got a DWI, so I kind of felt empowered to do it and kept doing it. That's a bad place to be.